All right. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Hope everyone is having a fabulous July. Can we, I always say this because I feel like every single month is like another month, another week, you know, and it's like July. This is like the perfect pitch for you guys because it is like more than halfway through the year, right? This is the second half of the year. And so when you're having conversations with your prospects, this is something we want to talk to them about. Today's call is actually about closing. So we're just going to have a, a, a conversation. We're not going to give you a presentation or anything of that sort. I've done a lot of that in the past. So if, you've ever, if you ever want to go back to that call, I think we've done it a few times on our team call. Um, so Audrey has it on her YouTube probably. I have it on mine. So, you know, if you want to see that call, and it's actually part of your coach basics. So if you're new, you should have seen that call. If you are not new, you know, I urge you to see that call because it's so important to know how to close someone when you get to that stage. Oh my God, look at Laura on the Metro North. Yes, girl. Okay, so, um, so like I said, Audrey and I are just going to have a conversation because we want to make sure that you guys have um, all the tools necessary to close someone. So let's backtrack a little bit. So in order to have a conversation with someone, right, the, the, the first step I'm going to, to, to say is that when you get to that point, you want to have a phone conversation. That's just the way that I like to do business. I mean, I, I think that when you are a new coach, I, you want to practice that skill. Right. I know that, you know, for Audrey, who's been here almost six years, right? Five and a half now. And she's going on six years. Like she knows, you know, um, how to have this conversation via text or via a uh, private message or DM uh, because she has so much experience. But for many of us who are new, well, I'm not new, but, you know, for many of us, we still need to have that phone conversation so someone can hear your enthusiasm. So someone can, you know, ask questions and you can listen. Right. But before you get to that stage, my recommendation is that if you are not doing the four vital behaviors consistently, you're not going to get to that stage to even close someone. Why? Because you don't have the confidence. Because I know that in the past, when I struggle, like I've always hit Success Club 10 and beyond um, in my 50 something months as a coach. It's been four years plus, right? But I can tell you that in the past, you know, I would struggle to hit 10. Why? Because there were days that, you know, something was missing. One of those four pillars can't be missing, guys, because you start to feel it. You, you're not confident to post. You don't have content to post. You know, you don't want to post because, you know, you, you start to question yourself. You know, am I a good coach? I shouldn't even be coaching. Like, who am I trying to, you know, kid? All that goes into play because you're either lacking the personal development. So if you're not doing it consistently daily, I urge you to start today. 10, 15 minutes, all right? Um, I would say start with uh, The Compound Effect is a very, very good book to start with because it teaches you about, you know, the small, um, sorry, my phone keeps going off and distracted me. It teaches you about doing the small activities right over time consistently and they compound into these big uh things and big big results right so the compound effect is a good one the five second rule by mel robbins uh the compound effect is by um darren hardy and then mel robin has a really great one which is the five second rule right and then you also have something that um that we all either are reading or have read already is Girl, Wash Your Face uh, with um, Rachel Hollis, who's amazing as well. Right? There's so many good books, 10, 15 minutes on your commute to work or before you, know, you go to bed or, or the first thing you do in the morning. Also, you're, you, you're working out, being proof the product works. If you're not doing that, you don't have the confidence to invite someone on this journey, period. Right? So make sure that you are definitely uh, doing your workouts so you're drinking Shakeology because I always tell my new coaches if you're not drinking Shakeology then how can you invite someone to drink it with you right you're being you're not being a hundred percent honest because you know it's amazing but I don't drink it every day 
I have a question when uh, when you're ready. Just continue your conversation, and then I think I have a question for you, ladies. Okay, make sure you want to put it in the chat box. Yes, so that you don't forget. Mm -hmm. um, so personal development, working out, right? Um, what else? Inviting, right? Inviting is a big one. And inviting is not just uh, posting a call to action, closing your eyes, and never looking at it again, right? You can't expect people to come to you this early in the game. You have to put in the work. What does that mean? Even now, I'm still inviting people consistently every single day, right? So that means posting. That means adding value on social media. That means, you know, always showing up because there was someone who said at Summit, uh, social media, right, posting on social media is your paycheck, right? If you're not showing up, then you're not going to get paid. So you have to, um, you definitely need to do that every single day. And then not only are you posting and expecting people to come to you because that's how this works, you now have to go do the grunt work and you have to go invite people, which is why we have Power 15. You want to invite anywhere from 10 to 30 people on a daily basis, whether you're doing that five to six days a week, period, because that's the only way you're going to have to start uh, you're going to have that funnel filling up to have those conversations, right? And then finally, our fourth vital behavior is recognition, which is recognizing first is going to be your challengers, right? Let's say you don't have any coaches. You're going to recognize your challengers. In your challenge group, you're, you're going to start observing who can be, you know, good uh, coach potential so that they can join your team. And then eventually you're going to recognize your team. So those are the four vitals. You have to do them consistently before you even start to close someone. And then once you start to, you know, have those private conversations, right, is when this whole process uh, starts. The other thing that I'm going to recommend before I go into some of the um, tips that I have for you is that you want to start using the tools that you have. So right now what's big? IG stories, right? Go on your IG stories, guys. Use them. Use them to invite every single day. Again, when I am dead in my IG stories, it might be because like, you know, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to be honest, right? But when I'm showing up in my, in my fitness and I'm showing up in my personal development and I'm showing up, you know, in my business, like I, I feel invincible and I'm like, yo, you need to join me. But if you're not doing that, you're not going to have anything to invite to. So make sure that you're inviting there. And then, like I said, not only are you inviting and waiting for people to come, but the people who are looking at your story, now you want to start those conversations. You want to start to send those thank you messages. You want to start to, you know, to invite them to your challenge group, etc. All right. So now that um, you've done all of that work and it's time to uh, talk to someone and invite them into, the, into your challenge group, how do you do it, right? So the easiest way is, like I said, get them on the phone. Get them on the phone. Because if you don't get them on the phone, then what ends up happening is that, you know, you're going to lose your interest. For me, having a conversation going for like a few days frustrates me. It like gets me like anxious because it takes forever. It's not that the person, you know, um, is not interested. It's just that life is happening. They're either at work or they get home and they get busy with their kids. And, you know, it's, it's life. It happens, right? And so you always have to, for me, what works best is to get them on the phone because it's a, it's a 45, 30 minute, you know, conversation. I get to ask all the questions in a very uh, non-invasive manner because I, I hate when, when, when you are interviewing someone, like they feel like you're just like question after question and it's not a conversation. People don't like that. Think about when, you know, I was in HR. Think about when you go into an interview, right, for a position. You're anxious, you're nervous, and that's the same way that the person feels if they feel like you are question after question after question. Or when you send them like all the questions, oh, here, boom, answer that. Like, where's the conversation? Where's the human contact? You know, where's your interest, interest for me, right? So make sure that you are having a normal conversation with someone. And so the, those questions that we have given you in the past, they're just a guideline, right? They're a guideline to help you transition into that conversation because you, 
never want to make someone feel like you are just selling them a challenge. You want you want them to feel like you are interested in them and helping them because that's really what this business is about, right? Helping more people live healthy and fulfilling lives. And so if you don't have the list of, of, of questions, make sure that you go to um, either, I, I know in Team Adrian we have them. I don't know that we have them in the new Luminous Nation page, but we can post them. Uh, but basically, you know, when someone, when you invite someone, or maybe someone responded to your call to action, you know, the first question you want to ask them is what's your interest? What piques your interest, you know, about my challenge group? What piques your interest about my, you know, about my post, right? You never want to say call to action because they, they have no idea what you're talking about. What piques, what piques your interest? And that's going to get the conversation. One tip I'm going to give you is that when someone, like many people, the first thing is, I'm interested, how much does it cost? That's the first thing out of their mouth, right? So I always ignore the question. There's some people that are very pushy and they still want to know. And my response to that is always, you know, there is an investment that will take place on, you know, on your behalf. However, I just don't know what that, that is unless I know what your goals are, what your needs are. So that's why I want to get to know you a little bit more and see what those needs are and what your goals are, what, what you're looking to accomplish. Right. And that typically comes them down until the end of the conversation. And then you start the conversation, guys. You know, what are your, you know, tell me, like Audrey says, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. What are your goals? What would you like to accomplish? And then let them start talking. Um, and, and in no particular order, some of the questions you want to make sure that you address during that conversation is, you know, what, what is it that you um, are doing right now that is working? What have you done in the past that didn't work, right? Um, you also want to talk about their nutrition. Is it a weakness? Is it a strength? You want to talk about uh, having them paint, you know, one day. I always let them tell me what a day looks like in, in, in their everyday life with nutrition. Tell me a little bit about what you eat from, every, from breakfast all the way to dinner. I ask them if they're spending money if they're spending money outside of the home to eat, because typically you can use that once they give you an objection, a money objection. So you want to ask questions about, you know, are you spending money to eat breakfast outside? Are you, are you spending money to eat um, lunch outside? How much is that? How much are you spending? I know that I used to spend about $20 a day. And so when I do the math now, that's a hundred dollars. And honestly, I'm being generous. You know, sometimes I would go over my budget. I would, I would, set a hundred dollars for my budget for the week and I would always go over. And so, you know, when people hear that, when you say, so, you know, and you want to ask them questions like, Hey, so are you saying you spend $50 a week? So that's $200 a month, right? When people hear that back, you want to have them confirm that they're like, Oh crap. You know, people don't actually do the math. People don't actually know how much they spend. So you want to ask those questions, right? Because you're going to need it. Uh, later uh, to help you through the objections. All right. What else? You you want to ask them what kind of uh, workouts are they into? You know, do or do they even like to work out? Because now we have to be mindset, right? Do you like to work out? Do you not like to work out? And if you do like to work out, what kind of workouts are you into, right? Because you want to make sure that you uh, connect them with something that is going to uh, to be a a soulmate program. You don't want to connect someone who hates cardio with T25, right? Or insanity. Right. Or someone who has, for example, another question is, do they have injuries? Right. Do they have any restrictions that you should know about? Because if someone has knee problems and you have them doing T25 or insanity, that's not going to be good. Or someone who hates uh, um, something like uh, yoga and you connect them with Pio, they're going to be like, what? Right. And it's not that the program doesn't work. It's just that it doesn't work for them. So we want to make sure that we're asking the right questions. All right. You know, a lot of things that you want to also consider is what have you done in the past and, and, and why do you think it didn't work? Sometimes they'll tell you, you know, the issue. Oh, you know, I just didn't have motivation. You know, um, I didn't really have anyone doing it with me. Right. That those are keys for you to know that, you know, they, they, they lack the community. They lack the accountability. Right. And that's something that you can offer them. All right. Um, or they can tell you, you know, I used to go to the gym for two hours, but I, but I, I ate horribly. Right? because maybe they didn't have a nutrition plan. So we have all of that, right? 
So you want to make sure that you're asking all those questions. Um, something up uh, came in my mind, and of course, um, I went away. Did I miss any questions, Audrey? Um, I just want you didn't miss any questions. I, I think really the point is to get them talking mm -hmm. with more as you guys have more experience and and Karen said that she can't get them on the phone. First of all, let me tell you, we're not in the business of convincing anybody to try this. If they keep giving you excuses, you move on to the next person. People are going to have objections, which, which is natural. But like Gabby said, look at how Gabby framed that person's Shakeology, because um, that could be a Shakeology objection, like it's too much money. Well, Gabby just framed what they're already doing, spending $200 a month on food. Well, Shakeology is $140. You know, so those, that's why it's important to ask questions. But really pay attention to how much talking you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's one of the number one mistakes that I see new coaches make. You guys just vomit all over the person that you're talking to, trying to convince them, giving them all this information and all these reasons why you love this. That's not what you do. We're here to listen so much more than talk back. And don't underestimate the power of third party tools. Like whenever I start talking to someone, like one of my, my biggest questions really is, tell me a little bit more about yourself and how you wanna feel. And then they're still telling me their whole life story. And honestly, I shut up. I do not do any talking to make them feel like I got to fill in the gaps. So they'll keep talking about themselves and I'll pretend like they're my best friend in my head. They're my best friend. And I want to know how they're doing everything about their life, everything about their kids, what they do for work. Why? Because then when I show them like, for example, the lift Four trailer, these third party tools that you point them to like, Oh, so check it out. This is the workout we're all doing together. They'll look at it and I'll ask them, what do you like about it? And they'll tell me like, Oh, I, I, you know, I like that it's only four days a week. And then because I listen to them, I'm able to be like, yeah, you know, with your four kids, I can imagine how busy you are. It's the perfect workout for you to start into. And then we could do something else, you know, and then you make them feel like they know you. And that's another reason why getting them on the phone is so important because they need to feel that connection with you. They need to feel that trust. If you can't get them on the phone, like IG stories are great because I've told you guys, I send them a video. I record a video of me talking directly to them and I send it to them. There's that personal connection. I mean, even with the coaching up, like I was talking to Norma today, she had somebody asking her questions like, well, what's the commission? What's this? And I'm like, just point her to our coach up video, you know, let that do the talking. So Danny Johnson is another great one. And something she says is apply duct tape. You ask the question, you apply duct tape and just let them talk about themselves. That's how you close them. People want to talk about themselves, you know? And another point is you have to be really confident when you get on the phone with these people. And one trick to that is like Danny says, just smile, smile before you get on the phone because it changes your whole attitude. And you have to remember you're here, like each of you is here right now because you love this business, you love these products and they're changing your life. That's what you need to remember when you're on the phone with this person because we are going to cave at our own objections. So when someone tells you that Shakeology is too expensive or the challenge pack is too expensive, if you think it is, what's the first thing you're gonna do? You are going to cave when that person tells you that. You're gonna cave and you're not gonna make the sale because they're gonna feel your own hesitation across the phone. So you have to be in the mindset, in the posture, that this is the most amazing thing ever. Like, girl, what do you mean that you don't want Shakeology? Like, this is a super healthy food that's gonna be the easiest meal you make all day so you can get back to your kids. Girl, what do you mean you don't wanna work out? Like, you're gonna feel so amazing and your husband's not gonna be able to keep his hands off of you. Like, that's the attitude back that you need to pro project to the people that you're talking to. Energy, guys, is contagious. So if you talk to them and you're scared and you're more worried about what you're gonna say instead of focusing like, you know, this is a person that needs me and is obviously attracted to something that I put out there, how can I serve this person better today? You know, it's, it's, it's an attitude thing that you have to be in that right attitude in order to make it happen. Like everything Gabby said, the, the strategy is spot on. But for you, you have to be in the right mindset when you talk to people. And always, always assume the sale. I always 
assume the sale. So once I get to the point like, yeah, what did you like about lift four? You know, I like it's only four days a week. I like working with weights. I like that it also works my core because I'm a C-section mom. Okay, great. So all I need is your full name and the flavor of Shakeology that you want to try. And I put it out to them just like that. And then I let them take it from there. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that, you know, Audrey said is, you know, about getting on the phone and just having a, a, the combo with them, just shutting up because you're listening. You know, sometimes when we're new, we're so worried and Audrey, uh, now that you're so worried about what, what you're going to say next that you did not hear anything they said about their needs. Like they give you the information you need to close them. Legit. Like people tell you why they need this. But if you're busy about what the next question is, what you're going to say next, you're worried about how you're going to close them. You just missed the information. They're telling you everything about their life. They're telling you that they're busy with three, four kids. They're telling you that, you know, they might only have 30 minutes a day to work out. They're telling you, you know, they're telling you everything that their eating habits are horrible. They're telling you that they have cravings. They're telling you that they hate cardio. They're telling you everything. But if you aren't paying attention to them, there's no way that you can provide, you know, a solution at the end, because at the end of the day, you know, you have to have a solution to their problem. And so that's why it's so important to ask the question, shut up and listen, because you have to know what to say at the end and say, oh my God, you are going to love my group because you're going to be able to work out at home, right? You tell me you have no time to go to the gym because you have a two-year-old and you don't have anyone to leave her with or whatever, right? You're going to be able to just have your personal trainer at home in your living room. How amazing is that? You tell me that, you know, you're eating out all the time because you have no time to, you know, to cook or whatever, right? You're going to have an easy plan to follow with delicious recipes. You're going to have, uh, you know, containers that are going to help you teach you all about portion control. You're going to get an amazing shake that's going to give you energy, you know, and you don't want to bore them with, with what Shakeology has inside but you do want to give them the things that Shakeology has done for you, right? Because people identify with that, not with, you know, whether they have like all these ingredients that they don't even recognize. Oh, you know, Shakeology for me, I, I've been drinking it since um, Matias was eight months. I'm a breastfeeding mom. And I had to make sure that I gave him the best, right? That I wasn't drinking something that was going to come out of my milk and then affect him. So my son is healthy. He's five years old. And Shakeology gave me energy when I needed it, when I was up, you know, throughout the night feeding him. Shakeology gave me the energy to press play every single day, right? It helped me lose weight. It helped my husband lower his cholesterol levels. Like you, you have to make that connection for them. It has to be personal, guys. And then you can talk about the accountability and you can say how that helped you. You know, you, you, you said that, you know, before you, you didn't go to the gym because no one was checking up on you. But guess what? You're going to have me as your personal coach. I'm going to be right there checking, making sure that you show up because my goal is to help you lose those 20, those 20 pounds that you said you wanted to lose, right? And not only am I going to be checking on you, the amazing girls in that group are going to be also checking on you because you guys all hold each other accountable. And so at the end of the, the day, they sold themselves, but you have to pay attention to everything that they're saying because if your goal is only to close them and to sell them, they're going to feel that. People sense that a mile away. And so you have to be careful with that. You want to make sure that it's not about the success club points. It's not about the sale. It's not about the commission. We get it. This is a business, right? But people can sense that. And so you're going to be successful in this business if you focus on helping their life change, period. And so make sure that you're asking the questions that you're listening, and then, then you're connecting, right? Because when people feel that they can trust you, people do business with people they like, right? They like and trust. And so if they know you, they, tr they like you and they trust you, they're going to do business with you. But if it's just about the sell, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel it. They're going to they're gonna sense it. And so it has to be genuine. And so just listen to everything, make that connection. Getting them on the phone is easy too, because if someone's saying to me, oh, you know, my son is going to kindergarten in the phone. Oh my God, mine too, right? Mm -hmm. I feel about that. I can't believe my baby's growing, right? That already, you build a bridge that didn't exist before that you may have not built, 
over right PM over private message over text because that human connection is so important and that's why we're in this business it's a relationship business it's not a challenge pack business it's a relationship uh, you want to make sure that you're connecting with people and the easiest way to do that is via phone and I get it Karen there are some people that don't want to get on the phone because they're skeptical they might not know you yet still they might be you know iffy about giving their phone out so then send voice notes so that they can hear your enthusiasm. Ask those questions via, you know, a voice note so that they can hear you. You know, if you have a, um, an iPhone and you're texting, beautiful, send that voice note. Even on Facebook, you can send a voice note. Or on, on DM, you can actually record yourself now as well. So, you know, so make sure that you're having that connection with people. Tamara, you said about your friends and having a busy July and you're nervous about it because you haven't started. Honestly, you're in the best position. Because you get to say, like, I'm starting this now. Do it with me. And they're your friends and they're your family. So they're going to be excited to get on the ground level with you on that. But don't look at how busy you are. Just look at the opportunity. Sometimes it's really a shift of, in mindset, a shift in perspective. You know, don't look at how, don't look at the obstacles. Look at the possibilities. And just go for it. Forget that you can sell it. Because if it was a restaurant that you were recommending, you would be like, oh, my God, no, you have to go. You have to go. But we get nervous because we're selling it. Yes, I get nervous because of that. And I also did what you told me. I asked them if they wanted to speak to you, to one of them, because it was actually seven of them that reached out. And one of them just said, oh, no, 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 no. You want to sell something to me. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. So I got scared because I have really good communications with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't want them to think that I'm trying to push. So this is where fine. your social media becomes your journal. And like you just got your challenge pack. So mm -hmm. take a picture of yourself reviewing all the materials and your containers and like talking about how you ha you're going to meal prep now for the week ahead. You know, your workout, you're going to do your first mist and mass workout. Show it, show yourself, show the sweat, you know, talk about how you're feeling, how you're going to start to feel now. And they're going to watch that. They're going to watch that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gab, do you know the answer to that? Is the to be mindset for group no, closed? I think it's closed. I, I was just reading that. I think it's closed. I think even um, even Mes de Mas and, and, and Live 4, I think they're closed. I think the last day was the day that the program started, which was yesterday. But does the, is the page remaining, are they archiving it? Or to be? Mm hmm. I think if I, I think it was if I, I know I saw a debate about it on the round table. I think it was for a month that it was um, going to be mm -hmm. not a month, maybe 90 days because that's how much the tracking was for. Mm -hmm. and I think after that, just like um, the 80 day obsession one, I think they'll archive it eventually. Okay. All right. So do you guys have any questions about this before we go into our power 15? Guys, just, you know, one last tip, just invite, just invite, invite, you know, follow up. There's fortune in the follow up, you know, just send those messages as scared as you are, you know, and, and just keep pushing through the nose because just because, you know, we always hit success club Audrey night, that doesn't mean we don't get nose. We probably get more no's than you get because of the fact that we're inviting a lot of people every day, right? And so it's not that it doesn't bother us, right? But we've done it long enough to know that it's not about us. It's never about you. It's never about us. It's always about them. They're not ready. They might not have the money, legit, right? They might just mentally not be ready yet, too. They might not have all the information. They might just need an extra, you know, that's why I always, always, there's so many people that tell me no, and I just keep digging and I keep asking questions and eventually they sign up because it's just that they didn't have the full, you know, information that they needed to make a decision. You're spending money, right? You want to make sure that, you know, that you're going to use it. And so, and at the end of the day, you don't want someone to buy something and just leave it on the counter because what ends up happening is they're going to say that it doesn't work and it's not true. What didn't work was them, right? So just do the work. Show up to these Power 15 guys. They're only 15 minutes. And you're, and you're filling up 
your, you know, your funnel. If you don't have anyone to talk to during the month, you're not going to close anyone. You're not going to help anyone. And if you are expecting the three people who told you at the beginning of the month that they were going to sign up at the end, you're never going to hit success club because something always happens. A kid gets sick or they got to, you know, buy something for whatever. Something always happens. Don't count on the three people that told you they were going to sign up. You have to continue talking to people until they sign up. Don't count them in, into your, your talent group. Mm -hmm. All right? So if you don't have anyone to talk to, then that's the problem. Make sure that you're always talking to people. You're always offering value to people. You know, whether they're hitting you up personally and asking you for a, a, a question, you answer them. Just because they aren't your customer yet doesn't mean you can't help them, right? Add value to them on social media, personally, one-on-one. -on -one. And then at the end, it's going to be easy to close them because they already have that trust in you. Yeah. That's it. Are we, we're going to use, oh, let me stop this. Yeah, let's, let's go right and see here.